What's up guys? I'm back with another reaction video. Today, I'm gonna be checking out the highly anticipated Doom 2. As I'm recording this, it's almost a, a month after this dropped, so I'm sorry that I'm late. I'm going to try and react to albums more quickly after they release, so I'm sorry that I'm almost a month late. But I'm here now. I know you guys have wanted me to react to this album. I've been interested in reacting to this album. Obviously, about a few weeks ago, I reacted to Doom 1 in my first listen to Scarlord. So this is Doom 2. A lot of you in the comments said that he has leveled up. He's leveled up a little bit from Doom 1 to Doom 2. So I'm really excited to see how Scarlord has progressed throughout his career, obviously, from Doom 1 to Doom 2. But I I'm excited. I've read a bunch of your guys' comments, so I I'm excited to listen to it. Without further ado, let's go. Okay, so this album's uh, a little bit long. It's 21 songs, about 54 minutes. So again, pretty long, but uh, I'm definitely in for a ride. Track one, Apocalypse. Oh my god, you guys were right. You guys were right already. Just only 53 seconds into the first song on Doom 2. He has almost elevated his his delivery almost a little bit. Obviously, he's going to have his signature scream in there, but his flow is a lot more clear than in Doom 1. As for the production, it does sound really, really good. Obviously, I mentioned this multiple times. If you watch the Doom 1 reaction, the guitar riffs, almost every single song were fire. I'm expecting nothing less, and so far, the song is very, very similar to what I heard in Doom 1. I, I have to mention this. Like I just said a few minutes ago, the production is insane. Like this instrumental is totally different from any of the songs I heard on Doom One. That I, I I can't say enough about the production on Scarlord's songs. They're always top notch. Like just listen to that breakdown. That is that's crazy. That breakdown is so insane. It's it's totally different from what I heard from Scarlord in the first listen. Okay, okay. Track 1, Apocalypse. Like I mentioned, I thought the production was really, really good. And Scarlord, his delivery was a little bit different, a little bit more clear. I, I enjoyed the song overall. Uh, track 2, Kill or Be Killed. Oh my 
my god, that's... I mean, nothing has really changed from the first album because, as you guys just heard, Scarlord is still flowing. Like, I really like his mixture of, obviously, uh, metal influence, but also rap influence with um how his flow just turns into a bunch of screams to supersonic speed. I, I just really like how he incorporates multiple genres into his music. And again, the production is crazy. I really like the samples in the background in the beginning. I like the song a lot. I honestly really enjoyed that song quite a bit, as I mentioned. I really like how he did his fast flow on it. I really like how it was produced. Overall, it was a good song. Track three, Leeches, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I think it's funny when artists have in like exclamation marks or whatnot, like it, it really emphasizes the fact that there are leeches out there. <laughs> like it could be anything, like if there's a period, then it's kind of like bland, like the title's bland, but maybe a question mark to maybe emphasize the question, you know? But I, I do like the exclamation mark in uh, song titles. It's it's funny how artists, you know, title their songs. So based on these exclamation marks, I'm assuming this, this may be one of the more uh, aggressive songs on the album. That's just my interpretation based on the title, but... Let, let me shut up. Let me let me listen to Leech's exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. <laughs> It catches me off guard every single time. Like I mentioned, it, it goes from complete screaming. That's all there is. There, there's screaming, very loud, aggressive music. Then he turns into the supersonic Sonic the Hedgehog. This goes insanely fast with the flow. And it's really impressive how he does that. It really is. Uh, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen another artist be so diverse in almost every single one of their songs where they go from one genre to another to a next and then switch back constantly. Uh, it's really, really impressive to hear. I, I do I really do think that the, the exclamation marks emphasized his main topic in the song so that, <laughs> that that's 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 funny okay next song Shh. exclamation mark all right how does that work how can you how can you say Shh, and then have an exclamation mark I don't like it, it kind of contradicts itself and then off of that they're there are three dots after, so it's like, huh? That's that's so interesting how artists title their songs. It's shh, exclamation mark, dot, dot, dot. Uh, what, what's going on there? I'm trying to picture it in my head. Are you in like a library and there's like a aggressive librarian like shh, you can't be talking. And then you're like dot, dot, dot. Like what is she, what is she on about? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> dude, what am I talking about? Let me, let me just, let me just continue.
forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, I know I mentioned uh, a, a certain breakdown in a song, but it seems like almost every single song from the beginning, it starts off very rapid and fast paced. And as it goes into the hook or mo almost the second verse, it kind of slows down and does a breakdown uh, where Scarlord kind of shows off his versatility once again. But it's just so interesting how how these instrumentals are are created in a way that fits Scarlord very very well. I would, I would love to see a video of Scarlord in the studio. I could only imagine how animated he gets because some of these screams are are insane. Like I I can't even describe it. Like it, it's crazy. It's crazy. All right, track five. We Oh my god, again, the instrumental, it, it kind of reminded me of almost like a, a 90s metal song, like that dun -dun 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 almost similar to like a Pantera, along with like the, the modern 808s and the, and, the, and the drums onto it, oh my gosh, like, I, I really enjoy the modern day almost like, I wouldn't even consider this trap metal, but Metal in general, modern day metal is almost like a collection of all different types of genres. Obviously, Scarlord is heavily metal influenced, as most of his songs are, as well as again I mentioned this earlier, but rap and hip hop with the you know eight oh eights, the drums on the different instrumentals. I think it's fire. I really do. I think I think this this type of music is fire. It's definitely an acquired taste for sure, but um, it, it's really really innovative. <laughs> Like, just listen to that guitar riff, dude. Hey, my shorty, she back to get a throw fuck. I've been grinding, trying to get my throw up. Now I'm shining like the diamonds in the sun. Like the size my wrist, don't feel my mouth and fucking grown. Don't you forget I'm the man that did a buzz. And somehow now I saw the man that's got the most. How long did he scream there? Like, that was at least seven seconds. How does one scream that long? Please explain how. I mean, obviously, there has to be like a training on how to do it because I can only imagine how sore his throat must be after a studio session because this is this is crazy this is his screams are insane but I Okay, so that that's what the title means. Yeah, I was kind of confused. I was like, I've never seen a a word look like that. N G A F I Y D. Gotcha, gotcha. All makes sense now. <laughs> Personally, I think that was my favorite song so far. I really, I really like what Scarlord did on it. Like the beginning was his normal screaming and metal, metal influence um, vocals. But then the second half of the song, he started, you know, bringing out his his rap influence and started, you know, rapping on the instrumental. I thought that was really, really cool. Again, showed off his versatility. That was my favorite song all around. I thought it was well produced, well sequenced. I really, really enjoyed that one. All right. Track six, Drown 60. Oh my god! Take out the rage! Wait out of 
Oh my god! So you guys were right. He has leveled up because that intricate flow pattern right there was that was too fire. That was that was too fire. Definitely a lot different compared to Doom One. Not totally different, but definitely more improved. So you guys were definitely right. Um, that that was that was crazy. That scream kind of sounded like mucusy. Did you hear that? Ugh. <laughs> it can't be healthy, like screaming like that. It's gonna sound like he he smoked cigarettes for like 80 years after after his his music career is over. Dude, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I I would honestly, I I would put Scarlord up with one of uh, I know he's not a rapper, and obviously he's not. Um, but if he were to do like a a one on one with another, you know, rapper with a a crazy flow, I think I think Scarlord could outrap your favorite rapper. That's all I'm saying. I really I really think he could because his flow is unmatched. I say that about. A lot of artists, but every artist is different in their own ways. But um, Scarlord, his flow is insane. I've never heard anyone do this on a metal instrumental. Like it's it's insane what he does. Uh, this this song right here is living proof of his flow, of his talent. Really, really, really impressive. I said this in my Doom 1 reaction, but it seems like almost every single Scarlord song, the 808s are like punching you. Like literally, they're just constant doom, doom, doom. Like five, six, seven in a row. Just straight 808, straight bass, straight drums. The production is just really, really well done. All right, Drown 60. Like I said, I thought it was really well done from the 808s, the bass, as well as Scarlord's flow. Like, it was crazy. Another really, really well done song. All right, track seven, Destroy the Cure. The cure for COVID? I don't know if you wanna destroy that, but whatever cure he's talking about, I'm sure it's for a good reason. So, well, let, <laughs> let, let, let's hear it. Can he even talk after recording these songs? I wouldn't be surprised if he couldn't, because literally, I could probably scream once my voice would be done. After recording these long videos, my voice is almost done. So imagine screaming like that in an entire recording session. I would be surprised if these songs are done in one take. If they are, like that, that's super impressive. But 
most songs are not one take songs, so I'm sure he has to repeat it if he doesn't like it. So I can only imagine the amount of times he screams throughout one song. Obviously, it could be looped through. Obviously, he probably doesn't do it more than a few times, but nonetheless, his, his voice has to be destroyed after a studio session. I'm really, really curious how he sounds after recording these songs. Do you hear those chords in the background? Whoever is on the guitar, you're insane. You're you're literally snapping. You are a maniac. Okay, so he said, they told me screaming was the reason I was bleeding from my throat. I think that's what he said. But uh, that that may have just answered my question. You guys will have to let me know. Again, another another very loud song. A ton of screaming. Again, you guys will have to answer my questions. Like, how is his voice after a recording session? It, it's crazy how much he's able to consistently scream on the track. All right, track eight. No chance of survival. You Again, you, you hear that? There's, there's gotta be some like mucus in his throat after screaming like that. But uh, initial thoughts: this beat is insane because the rapid drums, it, it, it's kind of sounding like a, um, a, a Russian pop song, like a, like a club, like I don't even know what they call it, but you know, like the Ru Russian club songs where doom, 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 doom. That's kind of what it sounded like. Um, obviously. This is this is totally different from any pop song, but just just the constant 808 drums, just rapid. It's interesting, but the lead up also kind of reminded me of a an, an older City Morgue song. The drums are totally different, but just from the sample in the beginning and to the guitar riff, it kind of sounded like an old City Morgue song. <laughs> love Scarlore's transitions as well where, where um you know there's kind of a, a silence besides the beat there's no vocals over the beat for a little bit in most of his songs and then right after that period of almost vocal silence he comes right back and, and snaps i really i really like his transitions from the hook or um you know the breakdowns i really really enjoy his transitions <laughs> Why did they have to loop the the mucus? <laughs> why 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 they have to loop that? Like they they really had to had to to show that these screams really affect Scar Lord's voice. <laughs> Again, I thought the song was good. I think the instrumental was very unique. Um, again, I really, really like what Scarlord did with his transitions from the hook or the the breakdown of the beat. I really, I enjoyed that one. I really did. All right, track nine, Robot Slut exclamation mark. Okay, again, the exclamation mark is what gets me. Like, 
<laughs> what well, is an exclamation mark really necessary on any of these songs? I mean, maybe if he's trying to prove a point, maybe. Who knows? Ooh. This kind of sound like a horror movie. this song would be crazy performing live because it was a little bit calm in the beginning and then out of nowhere it just dropped and I, th I think I think the crowd would go crazy the mosh pits would be insane this this song right here when when everything is back to normal I can't wait to uh, see videos of him uh, performing this one see it goes back to calm it's gonna drop again I know it Time go tell okay. your friend okay. your life okay. is just a dead Did he just bark? Wow. Wow. That that song was that song was wild. All right, track 10. Natural selection. <laughs> I said this earlier, but I, I, I would put money on it. I think Scar Lord could out rap your favorite rapper. Just saying. I, I really think he could. Flow wise, obviously. And maybe even lyrics. Uh, obviously, it's tough to tell what he says every single time, but Scar Lord is, is very, very underrated. I feel violated. He just spit on the mic. Oh my, I mean, it's that mucus, I know. I, I've been mentioning it all video. This dude, his throat has to be, has to literally be dead after every single recording session, obviously. I think, I think maybe the screaming got the best of him right there. I mean, he literally just spit like the mucus, man. <laughs> Natural selection, a lot similar to most of the songs I've 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 heard from Scarlord. Very aggressive. I like that one though, because again, he he turned up the flow. I mean, some songs when he raps, he 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 goes on uh, I guess semi-normal pace, but others he has to show his versatility and show what's up. And in natural selection, he showed why he was naturally selected to have one of the best flows in music. I I. Hey, I said it. I said it. I think he by far has one of the best flows in music. Just saying. All right. Next track. Utopia equals mass genocide. I feel like a lot of his titles are like statements. Obviously, they're statements, but like larger societal statements. 
Whoa, is that auto tune? I think he has a little bit of auto tune on his uh his voice, and I don't think I've ever heard that before. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong. I don't think many people have used auto tune while screaming on a track like that. That's again versatility. It, it's crazy how 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 much Scarlord experiments with his music, whether it be rap, whether it be metal. Now he's using a little bit of auto tune while screaming. That's very very unique. And the the beat kind of sounds a little bit electronic as well. This is this is a totally different song. Bro, what is that? That was literally Wally harmonizing in the background. What this this instrumental is insane. This is crazy. Wow, that was uh, very, very experimental. And I respect Scarlord for trying out different styles of music. I really do. I think it's really, really good when um, artists step out of, I wouldn't say their comfort zone, but, you know, experiment with different sounds and stuff like that. I really think that was a, a unique song. Definitely something different. I've never heard that from Scarlord before, or many other artists for that matter. That was crazy. I really, I really enjoyed the the differentness. I don't think that's a word, but ha, ha, that song was just different. I there isn't much else to say. It was definitely different from Scarlord's normal style. Track twelve, stand your ground. So last title we got, you know, a societal statement, you know, a movement perhaps. And now we got some, uh, you know, motivation. Stand your ground, okay? I respect these titles. Again, this is sounding like a, like neck brace by City Morgan. song is a little bit different uh it's a little bit less chaotic i was thinking about how i was gonna word this it's it's aggressive like every other song but it's less chaotic like there isn't as much stuff going on in the background obviously in uh many of his other songs there's a bunch of 808s hitting a lot of drums a lot of guitar riffs a lot of crazy sounds going on in this song it's pretty pretty simple there's um the instrumental there's a, a few things going on like uh vocal wise and other stuff like that but for the most part this song is a lot more simple still aggressive but less chaotic if you know what i mean really like his flow on this song as well and he changes up his flow a lot too almost every single song he raps in a, a fast-paced manner but it's a different delivery each time and i really think that, that that's really really cool to hear ah! 
stand your ground again change it up a little bit a little bit more simple but still good i really i enjoyed his flow throughout the song track 13 do i still dream all right so we we've gotten some exclamatory sentences like leeches exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark and then we got shh exclamation mark dot 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 now we got do i still dream question mark so this is interesting because again we've got some societal messages we've got some motivation like stand your ground but now we have a question do i still dream does scar lord still dream who knows i mean only only one person has the answer to that and uh maybe maybe we'll find out in this song This song kind of caught me off guard because similarly to uh last song this is pretty simple and it almost makes me appreciate a lot of Scarlord's music a lot more because if you think about it the chaotic nature of all of it with the guitar riffs the 808s whatever else is incorporated into the instrumental as well as the vocals this one is different not saying it's bad but it's a lot more I wouldn't say like boring but it is kind of different because right now we just got some 808s and Scarlord doing what Scarlord does best, right? So this this song kind of makes me appreciate Scarlord a lot more in his, in his craft because just the production on all of the other songs have been so fantastic compared to this. Not saying again, not saying it's bad, but this is more like what we hear on the radio most of the time. There may be a piano and then some 808s, or maybe just flat out 808s and just drums the entire song. So this this is not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's a lot it's a lot different compared to his other songs and it makes you appreciate the production that goes into Scarlord's music. Like the, there's no guitarist, no whatever else is in in his beats. It's just 808s and vocals. Again, I, I just think that song should make you appreciate Scar Lord's music even more. Whoever produced that, I think I think it was a really, really good beat, but just compared to the other instrumentals that Scar Lord uses, it, it's insane. I mean, in Scar Lord's other songs, there's a guitarist, there's 808s, there's a bunch of stuff incorporated into the instrumental, which is a lot different compared to, you know, artists nowadays. I mean, you can, you go on the radio, you hear a rap song, most of the time, there may be a piano in the background, there may be 808s in the background obviously some claps and other stuff but it, it's rare and I, I that's why i i love guitar riffs because it adds a different texture to the beat if you know what i mean it just it adds something different not saying that the other stuff is boring again it, it's not it's just different and it it kind of almost expands your 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 listening to other parts of the song because people can go to a song they're like oh yeah this beat's really good and and they couldn't care less what the artist's or the vocalist has to say on the song where as you 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 hear these chaotic songs and then you're you're just like almost blown away but like what's going on but it's a good thing it's a good thing track 14 caution <laughs> See, like off rip like just listen to how different this song is compared to the last one there's a guitar riff it's kind of leading up to a drop and then i'm sure there's going to be some crazy 808s in there Don't you advise the 
I've said everything I need to say on this flow. It, it, it's it's literally insane. I honestly really, really enjoyed Caution. I think that was one of my favorite songs. Okay, next track, track 15, Serotonin. I believe that is a neurotransmitter. Shout out Windows. He produced a lot of uh, City Morgue tracks on their, their last album, Toxic Boogaloo. I, I mess with Windows Heavy. You have to appreciate Scarlord's production and the producers that make his songs because, like, just, just here, it's like almost like a... I don't even know. It sounded like some bongos. I don't know what you call that. I'm not in the producer world. I don't know too much about the production side, but it, it's, it's just so impressive. It really is. Producers deserve more credit, in my opinion. You guys gotta let me know what it what is that as little as it sounds it adds so much to the song That was one of my favorite songs. I really, really loved the beat. I really enjoyed what Scarlord did as well. That that was that was a really, really good song. All right, track 16, Evil Ego. Yeah. <laughs> song sounds so i was about to say so evil and not realize that this song is evil ego but it's, it's almost like creepy like those those 808s and the drums just shake my headphones like it, it's it's given off like a a scary movie vibe i don't know i like it though yeah i still sit at the top i'm in the I really like what Scarlord is doing. Like, this is fire. This is fire. Scarlord is a one man army. I respect it. bro horror movie i like the song i did think the production was insane the 808s were crazy the bass is crazy scar lord he's killed all of these songs like all of these songs have been fire vocal wise and production wise all right track 17 red light a lot of songs i've noticed have been titled red light i mean could that be like the red light when you're driving could it be a red light in the sky what red light are people talking about what 
what what is this instrumental what is that it, it's sounding like let's say you have your speakers set up on like some glass and you put like a maybe like a penny or something something light on that same glass and it, it and, and it shakes the entire glass that's what it sounded like or maybe in a car like an older car with like a pretty good speaker system when they played that crazy song like this one the bass kind of shakes their entire car and it makes like a little uh, sound and that's what this beat is sounding like what is that it's crazy I have a question. At the beginning of the song, someone said one take. Did did he really did he really just do that in one take? No way. No way. I didn't understand one word he said, but I know he said something very important in there. I know he did. He must he he, he snapped. He went crazy, but in one take? No way. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Again, another crazy song. There isn't much to say. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. All right. Track 18. Let the world burn. If I'm honest, I just want to see this world fucking burn. This, this instrumental is kind of sounding like a modern rap instrumental. I don't know. It's good, though. It, it, it's good. His flow in the middle of the song kind of sounded like an old Slipknot song from their first album. Like, Corey Taylor, as much as Slipknot is metal, that dude can spit. He can spit. That's who Scarlord reminded me of on this song. A little bit of Cor Corey Taylor flow. I don't know. All right, track 19, Nightmares. Another wild guitar riff. What did he say? <laughs> it catches me off guard every single time. Was that live recording from the studio? Obviously, everything is live recording from the studio, but like, was that like behind the scenes almost? That was kind of fire when he was like one, two, three. That was that was fire. I like that. I really, I, I just, I can't get enough of this production. The production of every song, so good, as well as the vocals, obviously. All right, track 20, Get Him, exclamation mark. So, so far, 
throughout this entire album. We've gotten three titles with exclamation marks, one question mark, one maybe societal statement, and one, you know, motivational statement. So the, these titles are, are something else, but <laughs> I don't know. What am I talking about? All right. Get him, exclamation mark. Get who? Get him. Who knows? Who, who is him? Did he just spit again? I hope he recorded this before, um, you know, COVID happened because they gotta watch out for the germs in the studio. I almost flinch every time he spits. I'm like, whoa, I'm trying to watch out for, watch out for the, you know, the particles, the germs. I should wear my mask while listening to the song. Okay, get him exclamation mark. Based on the title, I was expecting something very, very aggressive, but surprisingly, that song was actually decently calm. There wasn't much to it. Again, it was pretty simple. Not saying it was bad. It was pretty simple. It was definitely a change of pace, for sure. All right, final track. Track 21. Go kill yourself. No, I'm not talking to you. I don't know who he's talking to. These, those are his words, not mine. So, J just clarifying. Don't take this out of context. Stay alive. <laughs> you kill yourself, you can't. Nobody wants to see you breathing. Go kill your fucking self. Send your soul into flame or blazing. Go kill yourself, you can't. Nobody wants to see you breathing. Go kill your fucking self. Send your soul into flame or blazing. Okay. Who, who made Scar Lord this mad? Who, who who made Scar Lord this mad that he had to make a song telling you to kill yourself? That's that's crazy. What could this person? What could he have done? What what, what did this person do to Scar Lord? I think I need to hear like a a rap battle between Eminem and Scarlord because Scarlord this dude can rap so fast like supersonic speed Eminem said coming at you with supersonic speed but almost every single Scarlord song this dude actually comes at you with supersonic speed this dude it's insane how talented he is it's crazy crazy absolutely insane and that was doom 2 wow 54 minutes of straight aggressiveness and i'm not surprised i didn't expect anything less for the most part i really really enjoyed this album i really respect the fact that scar lord experimented with different stuff like uh i believe on utopia equals mass genocide 
he had some auto-tune on the vocals. The beat itself kind of sounded a little bit electronic. I mean, a lot of these songs he experimented different stuff, and like you guys commented on the Doom 1 reaction, he has leveled up because his, his delivery is a more clear, the production on all of these songs were insane. Overall, it was a really, really, really good album. It, was, it wasn't it was too different from Doom 1, but he definitely improved a lot. And I, I, I see, I see now. But yeah, overall, I thought it was a, a really, really good album. Scarlord is so talented. And I, I also respect the fact that on all of his albums, he has hardly any features, if any. Like, Doom 1, Doom 2, no features. And I, I really respect that because if you look on most artists on their albums, they're gonna have at least one, two features maybe. But Scarlord, no, he he he's a one-man army, as he said in one of his songs during this album. I, I like the album, I really did. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want me to react to next. Peace.